Hello everybody and welcome to all new time viewers and this video was an excellent suggestion made by someone several videos ago of going through the best looking frames in Dragon Ball and at first if I'm honest I when I read it it wasn't anything way out there but when I thought of it I realized it would be a great way to share my thoughts on different animators without having to make a full dedicated video and it's something quite different actually and disclaimer I have to say this because when I did a review on the Dragon Ball game covers or the different manga cars draw Dragon Ball, even though I stated I wouldn't discuss every single one, I was, I was still getting comments saying like, oh, why didn't you talk about this one? It's my favorite, or why don't you talk about this game? It's iconic. And so with this video, I'll say it right at the start, I'm not going over every single great frame, you know, in regards to Dragon Ball Z, we have like 291 episodes, then there are all the movies. So, you know, we'd be here all day. And I don't really plan to include something just because it's iconic, because I mean, once again, there are countless moments within the series that are considered to be iconic and it's more so the ones that just caught my eye and are something that might be underrated by many fans and of course these won't be in any order and as usual the featured artist for this video is max underscore g underscore art 2.0 this guy has a cool style and he is only sitting at the time of this recording at 345 followers so go give him a follow and if you would like a chance to feature in a video use this hashtag and take me preferably on Insta. The link will be in the description. And now let's get onto this video. So straight out of the gate, we have Akira Inagami animating Broly transforming. I remember the first time seeing this, I was like, wait, did his face just tear apart? But I mean, visually it is the icing on the cake to this already wild scene as Broly powers up. And this frame in particular further gives a really terrifying atmosphere as Broly's pupils have disappeared and the skin, especially around the eyes and around the mouth is just peeling away as all this aura or key is just shooting out. The color palette within this whole scene in general switches to a lot of greenish and bluish tones and so Broly here is also covered in a lot of these colors and with the eyes they are given a dark green instead of being whited out like they normally are and it creates an incredible foreboding feel once again and finally the lighting effects like the light on Broly's headband look very nice. Next on to Piccolo's Sacrifice by Hisashi Aguchi, which I can't wait to one day make a dedicated video on him like I did with Nakatsuru and the others. He is severely underrated and actually when I decided to start talking about the different animators that worked on Z, he was actually one of my first set of the three animators I first wanted to talk about, the others being Sato and Yamamoru. Although I realized that being someone not a lot of fans know about might not be the most popular video, so that one is on hold, but honestly, I mean, the level of intensity he brought to the scene was ridiculously good, especially when you compare it to the previous episode and this frame in particular is, you know, just so intense. The facial proportions are stretched like crazy, really expressing the pain this character is going through. There are also speed lines everywhere and hatching all over the character with the lines themselves being very close to the point where you have areas of black around the character. This gives such a raw and gritty feel to the visuals, which works out perfectly for the scene and creates a dramatic shift in tone, really elevating this moment. The clothing is also being ripped apart and follows in sort of a spiral motion. And overall, the scene really has a manga feel to it as well. Really spectacular work. Honestly, it was difficult to decide which frame to talk about from this scene because the whole scene is, as I said, great. Now, I don't want this video to be entirely on close-up shots, so I thought I'd choose this piece here from episode 104, although I do not know the animator of this scene, but the storyboard was done by the legendary Shigeyasu Yamauchi, and although the base drawing itself of Goku is not way out there, the overall composition and lighting is the draw to this piece. The camera is positioned behind Goku with his body language indicating that he is very calm and is also leaning on a rock, giving a feeling of superiority and even a sense of heroism. Meanwhile, Freezer is in the distance, still with his arm raised, and a lot of the frame is mostly covered in shadow while you have a center light here, most likely illuminated by the lightning, drawing your focus further to him. However, what especially brings this scene together is the choice of colors. The sky is drenched in black with pinkish red clouds and magenta colored lightning, which looks visually spectacular. This especially gives the scene a dark atmosphere as the planet itself is slowly dying. And I wonder if the black skies were perhaps inspired by the limited color palette Toriyama went for in the manga. And on a side note, there are definitely some more notable shots within this episode thanks to Yamauchi's direction, although Ebisawa's supervision uh, did hold it back in some areas. And originally I placed Naoke Tate more near the end of the video, but this piece deserved to be mentioned much sooner. The poses, like always with his work, are incredibly dynamic with 
exaggerated gestures and amazing expressions, especially on Kid Boo. The speed lines added also further give weight to the blow as well as the white impact lines. And now back to a close up shot by one of my favorites, Masaki Sato, as Vegeta gets hit by the Genki Dama or Spirit Bomb in episode 34. And I did discuss this scene on a video solely dedicated to him, but I mean, I have to bring it up again. Vegeta's expression is off the charts. The exaggerated proportions of not just the mouth, but his entire head and neck being drawn quite thin create a terrifying effect as this attack is literally tearing him apart and really sells how dangerous this attack was. Speed lines and hatching also make a glorious comeback and quite similar to like what I said before, it really adds grittiness and depth to a scene. And like always, Sato brings the manga to life, delivering all the intensity portrayed in the original manga, which also should be given full credit for, that is where this dramatic shot originated. Then another Vegeta frame, just for good measure, I'd probably get shot if I left this classic out, which I believe was done by Shingo Ishikawa and corrected by Yamamoro, although correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, regardless, it's probably one of the coolest looking grins Vegeta gives in the series. The low angle shot gives a feeling of superiority as well as the way he turns his head on an angle, really personifying his cocky attitude. Features such as the nose and mouth especially are drawn quite pointy and sharp, which works well for the tone of this scene. The shading has great shape language and is readable and provided a good amount of depth and well, the skin tones themselves are great, although they may come off a little desaturated due to some sort of filter, speaking strictly in the traditional sense, of course, which is later removed. However, it does create a noticeable shift in the lighting and as to the tone of the scene. And up next, a classic scene of Gohan obliterating a Cell Jr. This episode was supervised by the legendary Tadayoshi Yamamoto, and I believe this scene was animated by another legend, Naotoshi Shida. And 100% credits also to DB Animators for this find, which he posted on Twitter. But anyway, to this scene. The first notable point that I really like is the gesture. It's dynamic, provides a good sense of movement, and expresses the power of the punch. The facial expressions on the Cell Jr. especially is quite noticeable, with Shida really pushing the expression, especially with the eyes. And the angular touch he has to his work really blends well for these types of scenes. The storyboard for this episode is another important name within the franchise, Yoshihiro Ueda, who worked within 59 episodes of just Dragon Ball Z alone. And the composition he provided is great, with Gohan centered in the middle with two halves of the opponent at opposite ends. And the choice to literally just black out the background and have the characters covered in shades of blue and purple hues really frames this as an important and special moment that just draws you further into the scene all the more. And the color palette will constantly shift like this as the various Cell Juniors are dispatched. And finally, I like the clothing. It holds form and feels three-dimensional. And now to this frame from the first Dragon Ball Z movie, which I added just because this whole sequence was something quite out there and different to a lot of the frames we will go over today, and honestly, something quite unique within the series in general. This movie was directed and storyboarded by Daisuke Nishio. However, I don't know of the animated for this scene, but what makes this stand out is more so the whole entire composition. The color palette completely changes into red and green, and the whole entire background being drenched in just this saturated tone of red carries an incredibly sinister feel and hints of green glowing from the main subject's eyes with the demons themselves being backlit also with a highlight of green and a lot of the demons but more so garlic especially for the shading instead of any secondary tone has just thick brush strokes applied creating quite a dramatic contrast between light and shadow. Furthermore, Garlic Jr.'s father is drawn in quite a heroic pose with his cape in the wind and a massive horde of soldiers behind him, not only on the ground, but also in the air, blotting out a large part of the sky. The whole entire framing of this scene really succeeds in building up the evil threat Garlic Jr.'s father posed and illustrates the backstory Kami is discussing in an effective and interesting way. Now back to Masaki Sato for the Super Saiyan transformation within episode 95. As seen before, he can really pack some expression into characters and, well, this one is no exception. The stretched out mouth, widened out eyes, and the veins which have sort of a rough touch as well as being a close up shot all comes together in creating an impactful and really dramatic frame as well as being part of a great scene in general. And like I've mentioned before, his style of shading and where he places it illustrates a good understanding of form and further adds to the three dimensional feel of a character. And the colors themselves overall are a lot of nice reddish and pinkish tones which look great on a character. Next up we have a gorgeous frame from movie 5 directed by Mitsu Hashimoto who provided the storyboard I believe for this gorgeous shot 
although it is unknown who the exact background artist is of the scene. But first, let's go over the composition and framing, which is excellent. I love the bird's eye view over the battlefield. You get a great sense of scale between these two fighters with Kula being more closer to the camera. Meanwhile, with Goku being scaled quite small, selling the message that Kula now has the upper hand over Goku. It was also a nice touch to have Goku around the center of where the forest is burnt out, which provides excellent contrast without him getting lost in the background and helps further illustrate Goku as a secondary focal point. The background art is superb and the effects work with the glow coming from the Kula's variant of the supernova looks great. And I thought I would chuck another background frame just because, you know, background art in general is often overlooked. And once again, I don't know who the background artist is, but it was also directed and storyboarded by Mitsu Hashimoto, and it is a perfect way to end off this amazing attack and the destruction of the main villain of this movie, with the sky returning to normal with a lot of the frame where the clouds or buildings being painted mostly in blue, which as a color choice gives a calm and even cheery atmosphere, especially compared to before. This piece also has a clear focal point, which is guided to through the use of background elements, such as the clouds parting away and the rubble pointing inwards towards the sky, where we get this breathtaking opening within the clouds with the sunlight illuminating the city with either aura or something similar left over floating up in the air. A really amazing piece. And honestly, I'd like to discuss the other shots of like Goku soon after, but we do need to move on because honestly, when it comes to this movie and I mean, many of the movies in general, they are filled to the brim with gorgeous shots. And as I said, well, this movie has no exception of that. Then on to quite a glorious shot of Trunks, storyboarded again by the legendary Mitsu Hashimoto, and it captures such a dramatic and surprising moment as Trunks just effortlessly walks out from the crater with Freeze's supernova attack. I also like the framing of him directly in the center with, with this enormous energy ball and the scale of it in comparison to his size with his body posture, also indicating how calm and in control he is. But I have to especially give credit to the artist who painted this. You can see like compared to the one from Cool's Revenge, how much detail was really put into it with, with these patches of yellow and I guess a lot of less airbrushing and more individual paint strokes are put into this piece. Again, I'm talking more about traditional airbrushing, not digital, of course. And generally, a lot of energy-based attacks seem to be illustrated a lot of the times using bright tones, somewhat like in the next piece we'll get to, whereas this time, while still quite saturated, they are more deeper tones, which I found to be somewhat of an interesting point. And getting close to the end here with a shot from the Bardock special and... Mitsu Hashimoto returns with another excellent storyboard. Once again, you get a strong sense of scale in contrast to the size of the energy ball in relation to the hundreds, if not thousands of troops dotting the outer atmosphere of planet Vegeta. Really selling the scale and devastating impact this attack is about to have. Equally, the color palette is amazing. I've always loved the reddish tones used for planet Vegeta, and it also creates a great contrast between the deep blue tones used for outer space. And to finish it off for this video, I thought, why not bring in the frame of Naoto Shishida, but corrected by Yamamoru of Gohan Super Saiyan 2 in episode 185. Although it is quite a simple piece in principle, it carries such a serious and fearsome look, aided especially by the squinting eyes and drawing the eyebrows quite slanted. The style of shading is also quite readable and clean and makes the character feel really three-dimensional. And like with C, generally a lot of great skin tones, a really great looking frame of a fan favorite character and well with that one we will finish the video thank you everyone for watching hope you enjoyed it and well if you did i might possibly make a part two let me know if you want it in the comments and as i said there of course are literally thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of amazing frames we could have brought up throughout the series then there is the original dragon ball series and gt then super honestly it could really go on forever and if you want i possibly could incorporate some frames from those series into the next video and well, I guess with that final note, hope to see you guys in the next video.